Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week we are outside in the garden in the flower patches so that I can show you around what has been happening in the last few weeks. It's a wee while since we had a look around them. So the whole of February I have been working outside trying to get everything ready for when we can plant out in a couple of weeks time. And there's been lots and lots of jobs to do so I'll show you what I've been doing in a minute. Um, the next couple of weeks I'm still going to keep going with all of this prep work. I'm waiting for some good compost to come because I've ran out of my own and then I'll be able to mulch the rest of the beds with these and then I think we'll be gnarly there ready to get going in the spring. First of all I just wanted to say a big thank you if you are a new subscriber to my channel. We've had a few new people um, joining up with a subscription which is fantastic. It's great to have you along and I hope you enjoy watching my flurry videos this year as the season gets going. So this is my second flower patch and this is the first one we're going to look at today because this is where I've been doing the most work recently just to make it more efficient and to work better for me growing flowers. So a few years ago now I started to run out of room for growing flowers in the top flower patch and I also wanted somewhere I could grow fruit and vegetables for our family. So Robert and I created a new flower patch down the front of the garden with these no dig beds and we made about four or five of them and fenced the area off from the rabbits and to begin with I thought this was great, loads more room for growing flowers in and it was fantastic. To begin with I started to get rid of the grass pasture and efficiency so we put weed fabric down there and that really helped and then I started to outgrow that flower patch so we extended it onto the right and built another one on so you can just start to see that there on the right hand side and it had grass paths to start with as well and again it took time to gradually change these over to weed fabric paths but that definitely helped cut down on the mowing and to keep the edges of grass out of the flower beds so as the seasons went by and I used my new flower patches, they worked really well on one level. They were great, no dig beds, fantastic to grow flowers into. The flowers grew really well. I had all this extra space, which I really needed from the amount of weddings that I was doing and providing flowers for florists. But I did start to see some things that weren't working so well for me. And this is just a picture here to show just how wild and messy it gets at the end of the season. So this is back in October. So I have a very tatty bit on the left hand side there where the original fence um, is to split between the two flower patches. So it's that right hand side fence and it had roses growing down it and it had lots of grass so even though I had weed fabric paths down either side of that fence um, there was always grass growing out of that bit where the roses were and the fence was. So this created a lot of problems keeping it tidy and because we had that fence going down between the two flower patches it was very difficult to get wheelbarrows down there and to work around with buckets and harvesting flowers and things and um, so Robert came up with the idea of removing the fence altogether and this has really opened up the space and made it fantastic and um, I'm going to have an extra flower bed in a year's time there that I didn't already have and we're going to be able to maneuver wheelbarrows and things around the flower patch much more easily it feels much better as a new open structure now so in the last few weeks, Robert and I together have taken out the stakes and removed the fencing. Robert helped with that bit. And then we have dug out the roses and transplanted them elsewhere in the garden to a dedicated bed. And then we have taken out the worst of the weeds and the grass that um, was there growing and covered it with builder's plastic that we had and put some bricks on it to keep it way down in the wind. And underneath that, that will just help that final grass to disappear over the next several months. And next year, I'll be able to mulch that new bed and to use it. And um, just opening up the space and removing the gates means that we now can manoeuvre wheelbarrows around much more easily. And actually, I think there'll be more light on the other beds as well, um, because we don't have that tall fence um, with lots of grass growing up it, um, blocking out some light there. The other change in the last few weeks is these big 2.5 by 4.5 meter beds which I have been working to split up. So my idea was to create miniature paths in the beds so that no section is wider than a meter now. And if I have paths in the beds then I can walk on them easily, I can reach in to cut flowers and I can reach into that one meter bed space um, from all angles now. So they'll be 2.5 meters long and one meter wide 
wide sections for growing in and this also means I can separate different flowers out. I can have one type of flowers growing in one section and another variety of flowers growing in another section and hopefully this is going to improve my efficiency and also it is going to just improve access to these beds, make them far more usable than they were before. So I've been using some of my own homemade compost to top up the beds and I'm just waiting on some more arriving now that I've ordered as I've ran out of compost that is ready to use myself in the garden and that I'll just get the beds ready for planting in. So the great thing about creating these paths is being able to reuse things that we already had in the garden. So the greenhouse um, used to have an old flower bed, overgrown flower bed, where it stood and it had a little path going all the way around that bed and we've just had a stack of these um, little slabs that we haven't been able to use anything for um, for the last couple of years. So I was able to utilise these to make um, the beds more efficient and it's nice to be able to reuse things that we already have in the garden. So this is really exciting to see. Although we're changing the structure and the efficiency of this flower patch and there's lots going on there, there's also lots been going on in terms of growing and you can see all these tulips that we planted back in November. You might remember the videos there showing me doing that. These are all starting to come through the soil now and we've also got some lovely hyacinths appearing as well. So it's exciting to see all these signs of spring flowers. So they're not far away, just a few weeks now I think. And then tucked under this horticultural fleece, I've also got those last few ranunculus and anemones that I've managed to get through the winter. So you might remember we lost all of the ranunculus and anemones in the greenhouse, but I had a few that were planted outdoors, and these are the ones that have thrived. So you can see them here. That's just the fleece lifted off to show you what's underneath. And there's just some ranunculus growing away, and they've got nice leafy growth on them. And there's another one there. So it'll be exciting to see them flowering. I won't have nearly as many as I was hoping to have, but I'm still going to have a few to enjoy. And there's a first an enemy bud you can see coming up there as well. So they're really not far away at all now. As well as annuals and spring bulbs that I have in this particular flower patch, I also have some sections which are perennials. And you can see the peonies are just starting to come through the soil now. Got alliums and leafy growth there, so they'll be great to see in around late May, early June time this year. And then we have got some roses as well, which are getting mulched at the moment and pruned ready for new growth coming in the springtime. So this is flower patch three and something I've been working on this winter as well. So on the right hand side you can see my one meter beds that stretch for about 25 meters down the garden and they have nice paths on either side. I can reach into them, I can harvest flowers from both sides and it works really well. On the left hand side is where all my narcissi are and I have planted these so much that they filled up the entire space. And as you can see here, this is me harvesting last year, I am having to step into the middle of the bed, so I am probably crushing narcissi round about me because there is no space to put my feet um, without standing on plants, and it's very difficult to harvest. Um, it really needed to have much narrower beds that I could reach down both sides with a path. And when I have finished with the narcissi, they all die back and I try planting on top of them. But again, growing annuals in here didn't work at all because of you're having to step on the soil and destroy the soil structure um, to get to those flowers that you've grown. So having a wildflower meadow in there really didn't work for what I wanted to use. I have to get in and access it. It would be great growing a wildflower meadow if you just wanted something to look pretty. But if you're a flower farmer trying to harvest flowers, that wasn't working. So I knew that that left-hand side I needed to create paths similar to the right hand side. So that's what I've been doing over the last few months. So this week I got the last um, path laid on the left hand side. Um, at the moment it's all covered in the builder's plastic again. That's just helping for any last weeds to settle down. And this will come off in the next couple of weeks when my, my compost arrives and we'll mulch the beds and they'll be ready to grow in then. And that'll have created far more efficient and um, extra beds for me that I can use. So for the last couple of years, I've not been using that space properly at all. So this year it'll be exciting to take it forward and actually utilize the beds and be able to grow more flowers. So in the right hand side bed in this flower patch I've got a few things coming back already which is exciting to see after the winter that we've had. So foxgloves are coming, I've got some feverfew that's coming back, 
I've also got some Hesperus which is looking really good. Now Hesperus is the one thing in my garden that the pigeons love. They love the new growth at this time of year. So I'm going to have to be careful in the next couple of weeks to probably net my Hesperus plants. I'm going to wait until the snow has finished next week and then after that they will be getting netted just until they're more established. I've got some Agastache growing and also some Linaria Canon Went. So these are all fantastic flowers that have managed to come through those minus 15 temperatures in December. So it's exciting to see my irises in this flower patch coming up through the soil as well this time of year. They'll be great to see at the very end of the spring. They are fantastic for using as a cut flower in arrangements. And also it's very exciting to see that my alliums are also coming up through the soil now. And um, they are a fantastic flower as well for arranging with. And there's lots of different kinds of alliums and I'll show you these um, when they're in bloom later in the summertime. So I've started to weed out the flower beds in the back garden as well and these are used a little bit for cutting but also mostly for our enjoyment and it's exciting to see the perennials coming back through. So this is perennial corn flower we've got here which is one of the first flower in the garden. I love Jacob's Ladder so this is starting to look nice and healthy and put on some leafy growth. One of the most fantastic fillers, Raven's Wing, one of my favourite favourite flowers in the spring for using in bouquets. And this is Aqualasia, so just showing you the new growth on these perennials might help you identify some of the plants coming back in your garden as well. And this is another Aqualasia as well, a lovely new fresh growth on these. This is Sedum starting to come back up through the soil too. And you can see the old stalks there that I've started to cut back. This is Astrantia. Um, this is what it looks like when it comes back into growth every year. Another one of my absolute top favourite cut flowers and so reliable here in Scotland in Zone 8B. So this might not look like the most exciting part of the garden but it's really to show you this new garage roof. So this is really exciting. Um, for the last couple of years the old garage roof had got worse and worse and it really looked like it would collapse in. Another big snowfall and I think that would have been it. It would have um, collapsed and created a lot of problems. Um, so we managed to get our very good local joiners and roofers in and they were able to fix it before the snowfall came in December which was brilliant and we have a lovely new roof now and that's really important for me because that old stone garage there is where I store my flowers for conditioning it's a lovely cool spot for them um, but that big problem was that that roof could have collapsed any time and it could have gone on top of buckets of flowers um, for weddings or for florists and things and now it's a safe, lovely, dry environment that's not leaking anymore um, and there's no risk of collapse so that's great going forward this year. And that bed there just beside the roof um, had to remove everything from it because the builders needed to stand in it for access to get on the roof. So I've been able to plant that up with lots of spring bulbs and it will hopefully be very, very pretty in a few weeks time. So this is what flower patches look like um, before any work has been done on them at the end of the season and through the winter. So not very pretty without all its flowers but um, it has lots of scope for next year. Lots of things are coming back which I'm going to show you in a minute. And um, because I've been working a lot on the flower patches down the front of the garden this um, one has been at the back of the list. So in the next week, this is the one that I'm going to tackle, um, providing that snow doesn't come. It'll be the week after if the snow does. And what I need to do is weed the beds. I need to cut back all the old perennial growth to allow the new perennials to come through. Mulch beds, tidy up, and we'll be good to go. Let's see what is coming back in this flower patch up here. So we've got lots of lovely alliums coming through and there's narcissi as well coming along the edges of the bed. So quite a few of the beds up in this area of the garden are lined um, with narcissi and alliums down their edges um, and fritillarias and muscari as well. And then the annuals get planted in the middle section um, and let the growth die back each year after flowering on these spring bulbs. However, although I've grown lots and lots of annuals up in this flower patch over the years, I am gradually changing it into more of a perennial garden. So we have got some lovely hellebores lining some of the beds here. That's a beauty there, that lovely double pale pink hellebore. 
And we're going to have a look now at some other things that are flowering. So this is a phlox that is coming back, looking great with that lovely leafy growth there. But what you can see is you can see these old stalks that are there from last year's um, stems and flowers. And this is a good time of year to start removing them now to allow um, the new growth to come through. Leave them on over the winter because any seed heads and branches are quite good for um, the birds and the wildlife in the garden. But this is a good time now to start doing a big tidy up um, ready for spring. So you just need a good pair of secateurs and go around and cut those old flowering stems back. So like this phlox, um, all the perennials that I'm going to be growing up in this flower patch are going to be really great for a cutting. Um, and so we'll be able to show you this year what these particular ones are. And you can see here that there's a lot to be cut back. So a lot of this is asters, um, that's their flowering stems from last year and I'll need to cut them back at the base to allow the new growth to come on through. You can see here the old flowering stems and just peeking through there you can see the new astrantia leaves coming through. So I'm gonna remove all those um, fallen leaves and those old stems, tidy it all up and it'll have a mulch round about it. I still be a quite like leaving the heads on over the winter time because they are very beautiful actually once they've finished flowering but again these will have to be cut back now to allow the new spring growth to come through. And here you can see some mallow as well and um, we're going to just cut the stems back on that just now. So you can see there are lots and lots of stems to cut back. These old stems can get chopped up into smaller pieces and put on the compost heap um, and they'll help turn into new compost that you can use to mulch your beds in the future. It's been so lovely to see some spring flowers coming back, these little miniature narcissi coming in the garden. The snowdrops have been absolutely beautiful. They're just peaking just now and they'll be finished in the next few days, I think. We've largely got some lovely drifts along the edges of the garden. And what I'm working on is just trying to gradually increase the number of snowdrops that we've actually got in the actual lawn. And um, so when we look down the garden from the house, we'll see drifts of snowdrops hopefully in the future. So this is just the start of it here. And um, these are the first wee ones that I planted last year and coming through and we'll gradually add to them each year. So hopefully in years to come there'll be an absolutely beautiful display to look at. It's got to be an absolute favourite of mine, hellebores, and it's so nice to see them coming back this spring. Aren't they amazingly resilient? They've managed to get through those minus 15 temperatures we had in December too bouncing back and they're here in all their glory and um, some are just in bud just now some are fully out and as you can probably see from all of the footage just now I really do love my double hellebores so I grow all sorts of different ones we've got double ellen whites we've got pale pink double ones we've got double plum purple we've got double green we've got double pastel peaches so many different beautiful hellebores um, to grow and I've just added to my collection a little bit um, most years and they take a few years to get established but you can get some really nice clumps forming with lots of stems um, a few years down the line. And we're just going to have a look at tidying them up in a minute and how to get the best from your hellebores just now. Look there you go that's an absolute stunning one there isn't it? Just can't beat them. And the most amazing thing is that they are really resilient so next week it is going to be minus four, five, six overnight, we're gonna have snow again, and those frosts, you would think they are gonna finish the hellebores off. But what you notice is that it really arches the stems, the frost, they're really hanging over in the morning. But later on in the day, you'll find that they're upright again, and you're able to enjoy all their beauty, and they've bounced back. So definitely a really resilient flower if you live in a colder place like we do over the winter time. So one of the things that you'll notice about hellebores at this time of year is that you might have a lot of tatty leaves on them. Now this is something that you can actually prune back and it's really helpful to the hellebore plant to prune away these old tatty leaves because it helps reduce the spread of disease which can transfer from the leaves into the new flowers and leaves which you don't want and um, it also prevents the new growth coming through. If you've got lots and lots of leaves um, on the ground around your hellebore plants then it's difficult for that new growth to push up through. And also you can't see these beautiful flowers to their best effect if there's lots and lots of old leafy growth around about them. So it is a good idea to prune them. You can see here I've done some pruning. And here is the older leaves here so you can see 
there's holes in them, probably had some slugs coming along and eating them, they're a little bit tatty and brown in places and um, it's a good idea to remove these. So what you're needing to do when you are pruning your hellebores is just to start at the top of the leaf and work your way right down that stem, find out where it ends and then you can just snip it off close to the base, leaving about five centimeters or so there. So I've got my snips here and I'm just gonna snip there and take that leaf away. And you want to make sure that you are disposing of or burning your hellebora leaves. You don't want to put them in your compost heap in case you're spreading um, disease from them there. So this is just me tidying up all these leaves. I can remove any weed seeds around there as well, remove any old leaves and then that will just let all that new growth come through there and you will be able to see the flowers much more beautifully. So here you go, you can just see that new growth there um, coming through. Lots of new leaves and flowers to come. So back out in the flower patch again, having a look at these hardy annuals, what actually has survived this very cold winter that we've had? Truth be told, not many things because I didn't have much outside that I had sown directly. The vast majority was in the greenhouse, which we did lose. But I have got some corn cockles, which are coming away nicely here. And so many of them have seeded that I'm going to have to thin them out and do some proper spacing for them. They're going to need to be about 30 centimetres apart in the next few weeks. So after the snow, when I think that it is fairly near the end of the bad winter weather, I will start to thin these out. We've also got our Aurelia that is coming away. It's still not put on much new growth at all. I don't think it's warm enough for that yet, but it's certainly survived well and it'll shoot away as soon as we do get some spring sunshine. We've got one or two Dorcas in places, one or two Scabious that have come through and one or two Cornflowers, but that really is the extent of the hardy annuals that have survived outside. I did lose all the Ami and Nigella. They just didn't get through the winter. Now I did get a good question this week and it was all about when should I plant out any hardy annuals that have survived from the greenhouse to the flower beds outside. Now March is normally when I would get them out, I would be hardening them off just now like you can see that I am doing. But next week we are looking like we're having minus four, minus five, minus six overnight temperatures again and a lot of snow. So next week is not looking like a good week to get them planted out. I think after that, the week after possibly. So we're looking at least mid-March at the moment into late March for planting out. Nothing wrong with hardening off at the moment if it's nice weather during the day to get them out for a few hours outside to get them used to it. But definitely bring them in overnight. And because I have predicted weather of minus six overnight next week, it's taken so much to get these hardy annuals through this winter, surviving that really cold spell in December for a few weeks of minus 15. And then we got a similar again for a week in January and I got them through that. So these are all going back inside the house next week overnight. I'll be able to harden them off in the day, but they'll go inside overnight because I think the greenhouse will just be too cold, even with horticultural fleece protecting them. And I don't want to risk losing them at this late stage just before they are ready to get planted out. So in answer to that question, I would say, start hardening off now, just gradually, a bit more every day, a few hours when the weather is nice in the daytime, and then make sure you're protecting your plants overnight. Check what your overnight temperatures are going to be and aim to get these hardy annuals and perennials in the ground mid-March um, to late March, providing that we're through the worst of the winter weather then. And as soon as they get some spring warmth, they will shoot away really quickly. You'll be surprised at how much growth they put on. And you should get some flowers, hopefully, by the end of May. So what you can see here outside hardening off is pretty much the extent of what I have that survived the winter. So really not much at all. Sadly, I did lose all my sweet peas, which is the first time that's ever happened to me. So minus 15 was obviously too much for them. So I'm starting to sow new batches just now for a slightly later flowering. Um, I think I've got one tray of mixed ranunculus and anemones that have come through, um, but that's it. Um, and I had trays and trays and trays of them. Um, and I've lost a lot of hardy annuals as well. No, 
nigella no ami um, so the things that i've got through are the corn cockles the corn flowers and um, sweet williams done all right as well Achelia has done really well and um, so just a few things that have survived and um, or i'll lay out a little bit it's looking okay but um it's not as strong as the corn flowers or the corn cockles so those are definitely the most robust hard annuals i have that i've got through um, very cold temperatures this winter but we will have a look in far more detail at the seed sowing and at these hardy annuals I'm planting out and things in the next couple of weeks once the snow has passed. Thanks so much for coming around the garden with me today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been doing in the last few weeks. I'm really looking forward to spring coming now. I feel like it's been a long winter. We've lost a lot of plants along the way because of these very, very cold temperatures we've been having. And I feel like we're about to go into another week of it next week. But hopefully that will be the last of it after that. Hopefully then we'll get some good prolonged sunshine and some warmth to get all the soil warmed up and to get the plants all going and hopefully get some flowers in April to share with you. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we will be having a look at seed sowing again and um, we'll see how much we can get done next week it's really going to depend on those temperatures and how much it plummets and um, but hopefully I'll show you what I have been doing and I'm going to continue the series as well where I am looking at individual flowers so I think that we'll be having a look at Aurelia next and I'm going to continue doing that throughout the year as I can film more footage of individual flowers so I hope you're enjoying that Please do um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It is great to see it growing and to be able to share my flowery journey with so many of you. It's fantastic and I really do love um, getting all your comments. So please do keep those coming in and I'll see you very soon.